and we're just uh, thankful that God has connected us all together. Uh, the, as Sherry said, the message tonight is empowered to change, and we're being transformed into the image of Christ, and uh, we can we can think about that, that, uh, well, we're all going to look similar, but in reality, we're all unique, and we'll always be unique, and if we all go uh, in our separate uh, cities or towns and uh, to a studio and make an image of Jesus Christ. Some might use uh, clay and some might use uh, metal. Some might use uh, oil to paint or, or a pencil to draw. And so all of them would be images of Jesus Christ, but they're, none of them are, un are the same. And so that's the way we all are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ and uh, that doesn't make us all look exactly like we're just we're looking like the unique image of Jesus Christ that God has uh, predestined for us to look and, and that's that's exciting you know we're not like uh, mashed potatoes that uh, we all uh, mm -hmm. put all the potatoes together and we're all mashed potatoes you're, you're unique and uh, you're powerful in the Lord and God has great things in store for you. And these are the, the kinds of things that we're going to be looking at. And first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, we are being transformed. And, and so uh, let's just think about what are we transformed into? Well, it's how we are known in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I, I have just four points I want to cover mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, but... I believe we're going to look at some verses that we're all familiar with, but we're going to look at them in a new way. And uh, from Revelation, I believe that the God that God is wanting to share with us by His Spirit, and uh, for all of us to be transformed into the unique image that uh, we're to be uh, destined to be transformed into. And, and so, how are we being? Uh, what? How are we known in heaven? And what's interesting, you're known one way in heaven, and uh, uh, heaven is on a little different scale mm -hmm. and schedule than we are. You know, a day here uh, is like a thousand Sound years good. there. Uh, 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 I mean, a day yeah. there is a thousand years here. And so things are different in heaven. And, and so I don't think that we are seeing exactly uh, every uh, year uh, that they see us differently. We're seen in eternity the same way mm -hmm. as God designed us uh, to be. be. And uh, the way we're going to start is we're going to look at Jeremiah and uh, Jeremiah 1. And this is talking specifically to him, but this can be generalized to all of us in respect that God knew us before we were born. And he formed us into his image of who he wanted us to be, the way he designed us uh, to be. But we're going to look at Jeremiah, but remember, God is shows no favoritism and no partiality. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, this applies to all of us. It may not be exactly the same words that apply to you, but he knew you before you were born. So read this, Sherry, please. Okay, Jeremiah 1, 5. This is out of the Amplified. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. Now he's talking about you and I. He's talking about Julaine. He's talking about Nalco. He's talking about Wayne. He's talking about all of us. I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I separated you out to myself. As my own, I have appointed you. Okay. And that's for every single one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's exciting. That is exciting. That verse applies to all of us. Amen. That God knew you before you were born, and he had a design for you. He had a plan for you. He uh, wants you to do certain things. We see this in Ephesians uh, 2. 10, just to follow up with the same idea, he had I, things for you to do uh, from the beginning. So Amen. Read Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Okay, so the works have already been prepared. Hallelujah. That we're going to do. They're already prepared. The uh, mm. uh, the who we are is already prepared, already designed. And uh, what we want to think, well, who are, who am I and who are you? And if I look at myself, I, I might think, well, the real me, the real Freddie uh, is a combination. It's a culmination of my experiences and my knowledge and my wisdom. But that's not who I really am. I, who I really am mm. is who God designed me to be. That is the real, true me. Mm -hmm. That is the real, true, authentic Freddie. Mm. It's the same for you. And you might think, oh, I, yeah, I'm, just, I really, yeah. I, I'm just defined by my circumstances and by my family and, and by the what culture, I do. what I do. And I'm defined by all of those things. No, who you really oh, are. are. Who you, the true you, the authentic you is the one that God designed you to be. The one, this is how you are known in eternity. How you are known in eternity is who you really are. Now, I have well, always, okay. okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I've always thought, you know, the real me is my spirit man. But that's just a generalization, and that doesn't tell me anything about about it, really. Uh, the real me is my spirit man. But the real me is who God designed me to be, what he designed for me to do. It was that his design, and that's who we are known in eternity. We're already in there. We're already known in eternity as he has designed us to be. That is the real you, the true you. Okay, Sherry, what you well, want to say? I, I was just, uh, a scripture came to me uh, quickly here, and that is uh, the Apostle Paul said, henceforth, we know no person after the flesh. Okay. And so what, what we're looking at, you know, you're looking at me, I'm looking at you. You know, that is, we're to look beyond that, beyond the flesh. And, and that's another dimension uh, in the Lord. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so don't let your culture define you. Don't let your family define you. Don't let your job define you. You're defined by who God says you are. Amen. Who he said you were before you were born. And who he prepared the, and the works that he prepared for you to do. It was all prepared beforehand. That is the true authentic you. Now, let's look at it again here. Uh, we have this verse in uh, Romans, Romans 8, uh, 28 okay. 20 and 29, 29, which is an amazing verse. But what we're, we're going to read this out of the, trans the, the passion. passion translation. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers, ooh, I love that, who have been called to fulfill... His design purpose. Ooh, that's where I get the word design. Hallelujah. From. It's right there. It's the, and he has a designed purpose for you. He has a design. And we're here to fulfill that design purpose. That's how we're known in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. It's not, oh, you're 20. Heaven knew you at age 20 is the way you were or 25 or whatever age you are now. No. <laughs> mm. You're known in eternity yeah. the way God designed you for his purposes. For he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. Okay. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so we're doing a series on being transformed. And my prayer for each of you is that you'll take time during this series and, and to consider personal transformation, that we can mm -hmm. all be transformed. We're, that's, that's what God wants. He wants us all to be transformed, to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. But he's really talking about the unique image 
that he created for you, the way he wants you to look, the Amen. way he has Amen. prepared you to look, the things that he has prepared oh, for you to hallelujah. do. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the real radical approach. Yeah, yeah. A real radical approach to your identity, who you are. Mm. And, and, and I know we've all been uh, confined and limited by what people think about us and what our, what our brothers and sisters and people in the community think about us, but that's not who we are. That's not who we are. God has a design that he had in his heart for eternity. So that's who you really are. And he's your father. He's the spirit. He's the father of spirits and you are a spirit. So yes, you are a spirit. So the real you is spirit, but mm. the way it's not just a general spirit it could take on any kind of form or any, do anything. No, it's something that God designed you to be and to do a whole long, long ago you know, before you were ever born, Sherry. Well, I just have something else that's come up in me, and that is people ask me all the time, well, what is my purpose? How do I, how do I find out what my purpose in life is? Well, I believe that Brother Fred has just brought that forth. And that is we are to find out what God designed us to do. Okay. What was his design for us? Okay. And we can ask him that. And he will show us that. Amen. Yeah, by the spirit of God, he will show us what we were designed to do. And that is your purpose. Amen. That is your calling. That is your purpose. See, it takes something to activate. Yes. To activate that transformation. Amen. Amen. And that's Amen. the power Amen. of the Holy Spirit. The power of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to speak some things into your life. That's right. And you begin to act on those things, and that transformation begins to happen. You begin to move towards who God says you are. Uh, you know, God Hallelujah. is... is Oh, he loves you as yes, you are. Yes, yes. But he also loves you as who you are becoming. And, mm -hmm. and who you are becoming is who you are in eternity, who he has in his heart. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Who you are in eternity. He loves you who you are. He loves you who you are becoming because his thinking is not, he's not stuck mm. in this current Oh, he's here. not stuck. He's not stuck. Oh, hallelujah. That'll preach. <laughs> hallelujah. God is not stuck. He, hallelujah. He, he, he sees your ending. He, Amen. He has from called, the beginning. He Amen. called your ending from the beginning. Oh, he knew hallelujah. what your end result was going to be. And that is who you are. He Who he says hallelujah. you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we just better get up and get moving Amen. towards who, who we are. Who we are. <laughs> the way God sees us. Amen. This Amen. is Amen. A, a, a very similar topic that we've talked about before, but the revelation here is different. Yes. It's Amen. Taking, God's taking us to a higher level to begin to see things from his perspective, to partner with him, to co-labor with him. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now here's my second point. We need to distinguish between the old man and the new man. And I want to tell you a story about uh, one of the most famous artists, most uh, in, in all the world. His name is Michelangelo. And uh, he was outstanding in oils. And he did all of these great uh, paintings and all, but the sculpture, there, there's some, there was something really different about the way he mm -hmm. uh, approached the stone. Uh, and we saw it, Sherry and I were in Italy, in uh, Florence, uh, years ago, and we were seeing the statue of David, Michelangelo's statue of David, which is one of the most prized piece of art uh, in the world. Mm. It, it's out of a rock and out of a stone. And, and uh, this stone, uh, I, I want to explain how, how he did it, how he did this sculpture of David, which was just a young boy facing Goliath. And, and you can see uh, he's got uh, his sling and he's about to throw a sling uh, with a stone in it. He's 
facing Goliath. That's what the statue is about. And you can see his nostrils flared and he's, he's so intense and he's about to sling that stone at, uh, at uh, Goliath and bring him down. And, but David approached sculptures. Uh, Michelangelo. I'm sorry, Michelangelo approached sculptures different than anybody else. Other people working in stone, uh, they do drawings and they do measurements and they mark things and they, uh, they go and begin to chisel away the rock and they, uh, and, and they go back to their measurements and back to the drawings and they do it over and over and over again. But Michelangelo had a different approach and this is why he explained it. And, and even in his, uh, um, writings about what he did. He, he saw the figure inside, imprisoned in the stone. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular stone that uh, David came from, uh, many other artists had seen it and they rejected the stone. They, they said, you just can't make anything worthwhile out of it because it, it had flaws in it. Uh, there were pieces uh, uh, missing that some of the earlier uh, people had tried to break little pieces here and there, and, and uh, it, nobody could come up with an image to work on in it. And so it had laid in the sand for year after year until David saw it. And he saw no, Michael it. No, Michelangelo saw it. Sorry. Now, David's on my mind. I apologize. And David is coming forth. <laughs> he Amen. saw David coming forth out of that, that stone. That he was imprisoned in that stone and, and he had to be released. And so he, oh, he, thank you, Jesus. he took that stone and he's, he never drew a picture of it. He never made a measurement of it. He just took his stone tools and started working on that and releasing the David out of, out of the stone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the way, how did he get that? He gets that from God. God, that's the way God sees it. He, he puts that image inside of us. You know, uh, 1 Peter uh, 2, 5 says that we are lively stones, living, stone, living, living stone. stones. So we're stones. So the way yes, what yes, you look yes. at me and you see me and the way I see you, that's the outward appearance of these living stones. But but God's taking this uh, by the Spirit of God. He's taking his uh, chisel and his hammer and he's beating and he's hitting and he's knocking here and he's doing that and he's bringing forth the real you and the real me. Hallelujah. Inside, Hallelujah. The one that is on the inside of you that needs to be released out of the Jesus. prison. Glory to Thank God. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's even releasing right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's releasing you out of that that prison, out of the stone, out of anything that has held you back and caused you to think differently about yourself. God is releasing all of that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay. So there are two uh, verses I want to share to read, and, and they're in Ephesians. We're going to read them out of two different translations, and uh, it, it's about the old man and the new man. Mm -hmm. The old man and the new man. See, the old man is this outward <laughs> stone, mm -hmm. and, and the, all of those rough places have to be uh, chiseled off and yeah, knocked no. off so that the, the real you mm -hmm. can, can, come forth. can come forth. That's the new man. And so all of that old stuff, all that old stuff that has hung us, hung on to us and kept us bound up and limited and mm -hmm, tied up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to come off and we're, the real you mm -hmm. has to be released. Hallelujah. And we're Hallelujah. going to see it here in these two translations. Read these. Ephesians 4, 22 through 20, uh, 24. This is from the New American Standard. That in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourself of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self. Okay, I want which, to say, I want to stop here and say, it, it's the old man. It's your responsibility to get rid of the old man. Yeah. And, and how do we do it? This is a real important point, and that is by the renewing of our mind. And we'll talk more about that later, but the point I want to make here, we've got to get rid of that old self and we do it by the renewing of the mind so that the new man, the new person mm -hmm. can come forth. Mm -hmm. All right, Sherry. And to ahead. put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. 
And then I'm going to read it out of the Passion There's Translation. There's another phrase here I want to pick up that's really important. Okay. And he has taught you to let go of the lifestyle of the ancient man. Listen to that. Your old self is ancient. It's old. Hallelujah. It's useless. Yeah, it's right. unproductive. That's right. Woo! Which was corrupted by sinful and deceitful ye, uh, desires that spring from delusions. Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given unto you. Well, there Hallelujah. I want to, I want to focus on I'm, this. I'm going to read it again. Uh, now ahead. it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given unto you. Okay. So, Hallelujah. So how is our mind renewed? It's by the revelation yes. that is given to you by the Spirit of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So that's how we renew our mind. And, and see, just going to, uh, let's say, a church and hearing uh, just a blanket to message, that's not revelation to you that applies to you, that relates to your identity. It, it's just general words and, and general things, and they may be good, and they may be good, and you may, you may need to know those things. But this is talking about the revelation mm -hmm. that is given to you about who you are. Oh, hallelujah. That's the hallelujah. way your mind is renewed to the new identity, to the new man, to mm -hmm. release mm -hmm. to release the new man out hallelujah. of the prison yeah. that yeah. he has been in. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Okay, read the rest. And to be transformed as you embrace or you receive the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union or in harmony and unity with him. Hallelujah. For God has recreated you. Listen to that. Well, there it is. You're a new creature. Doesn't it say that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17? It says you are a new creature. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I love the very next verse, which most people do not read. And that is, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. I love that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it says, for God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness. And you now belong to him in the realm of, of true holiness. Oh, hallelujah. And that's the realm we need to be living in. Amen. There's no discouragement there. There's no disagreement there. There's no anxiety there. There's no worry there. Uh, there's no envy there. Uh, there's, there's no negative emotions there because we're in true holiness. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Okay. So I have a third point. And my <laughs> third point is how do you bring forth this new man? It's like Michelangelo. How did he bring forth David? Well, we've got to bring forth. We've got to get rid of the old. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility mm -hmm. to get rid of the old, to bring forth mm -hmm. the new. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to see this. And it starts, and again, <clears throat> verses that we're all very familiar with. We'll start them in Romans 12. We'll go from 1 to 3, but we'll just start, first of all, with Rome, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Okay. Again, we're all very familiar with these verses, but what it says, we're going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind when we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. We're going to submit to the Lord. We're going to submit to his spirit. We're going to fulfill his desires and his purposes. It's not about our old man ruling and old flesh ru ruling and reigning. In order for us to be uh, a vessel of honor for service, mm -hmm. oh, hallelujah, we're going to have to present <clears throat> ourselves and, and 
put down our agenda and put down our ideas and, and take on his by the renewing of our mind. But remember what we saw, said about the renewing of the mind. It's about the revelation that each of us receives from the Holy Spirit. Now, the, where this message is headed is the third verse here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is going to knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is from the message. Living then as every one of you does in pure grace, it's important that you do not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are or what we can do for him. Okay. Woo! Hallelujah. This is an incredible verse here. Mm, he says, mm. we're all living by grace. We're living by grace and, and uh, we're able to do things and we're able to go places and do things and uh, do good things and all oh, we can present oh all i want to do this for god i want to do it for god so mm. we can do all of this and we can present it to god but that's not what he says to do here he said who we really are is what god is going is to do to for you <laughs> and what he's going to do, do for, for us, us. We, we need mm. to be aware of who god is mm -hmm. and what he does, does for, for us. us it's not about what you do see this mm -hmm. renewing of your mind and taking on your identity of who he says you are comes from knowing him and knowing what he is going to do in your life. Hallelujah. It's not about Hallelujah. Hallelujah. all of the good service that you can do mm -hmm. and, and oh, teach all of this and, uh, and uh, put out all of this information and go and visit the homeless and do do all of this. No, this is about you finding out who God is, who God is for you. And, and that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. It's always a good question. And, and you might be facing some difficult times and you can say, well, well, God, who do you want to be for me in this situation? That's right. You know, there was a woman that was uh, dying from cancer and, uh, and uh, she asked her, her pastor uh, about it. And, uh, and he said, well, ask God who he wants to be for you at this time mm -hmm. in this situation. Who does God want to be for you in this situation? And, and uh, so she went and uh, day after day, kept asking this question. But on the very day she had asked God about that, uh, there was a little girl that was uh, saw a vision. And uh, the little girl was there with Jesus and, and uh, talking to Jesus. And Jesus gave the little girl a piece of paper folded up and he said just hold on to this until you see a picture of this woman and you give it to her and so this was several days went by and she was at the uh, this woman who was dying of cancer she was at the uh uh at the grocery store and she met a woman that she knew and and the little girl said oh mama mama that's the that's the woman that's the woman i saw uh the picture of with jesus and, and uh so she finally got her mother's attention and the mother first said, oh, I'm mm -hmm. talking, I'm talking. But then she said, she wouldn't, the little girl wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And then she pulled out a piece of paper that she'd been holding on for days and said, Jesus told me to give you this piece of paper. And so she, the woman opened it up and, and you know, her question was, who do you want to be for me? And he said, I'm the God that heals you. <laughs> That's who I want to be for you. I'm a God who heals you. Hallelujah. 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 We need to ask mm -hmm. God, who mm -hmm. do you want to be for me in this situation? I'm going through some difficulties, but who do you want to be for me in this situation? And, and, and what do you want to do for me? This is not about what can I do for you? Oh, let, let me teach some more lessons. Let me teach some more classes. Let me uh, feed some more poor people. Let me do this and do that. What can I do for you? You ask God what he wants to do for you, Hallelujah. who he is for you. If you're sick, he wants to be Jehovah Jireh. If your finances are low, he wants to be Jehovah. If you're sick, he wants to be Jehovah Rapha to you. And if you're... If you need uh, money, <laughs> he wants to be Jehovah Jireh. My word is just... Yes, I know. Uh, hallelujah.
Ask him who he wants. Who he wants. Who he wants to be for you in this situation. That's what your identity is. It's who he is. You, if you want to know your identity, this is it. Sherry raised the issue earlier. People want to know yeah. what their identity is, what their calling is. The two things. What their purpose is. The two things to answer that. Who is God and what does he want to do for you? So, so it's not about <laughs> you find it. Oh, I want to find my purpose. I want to find what I'm supposed to do. You find out God, who God okay. is, who he wants to be, and what he wants to do for you. Amen. That is your identity. Yes. You find your identity in that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To know God and to know him better and living in his presence. Know him, who he wants to be in your situation, and oh, what he wants to do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, did we finish that verse? Oh, I think so. Okay. Now, read that last uh, part again. That's oh. so important. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us. Okay, right there. Hallelujah. You're, you're wondering what your calling is, what your purpose is. You just look at these two issues. Amen. Who is God? Amen. Who's God for me? That's the first one. Hallelujah. And what does he Hallelujah. want to do for me? <laughs> it's not about what you can do Hallelujah. for God. You're living by grace anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And that, that's my third point. My third point then. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, How to bring Jesus. it forth. Now, what's the advantage? What's the advantage of following God's plan? And that's my fourth and final point. And bringing forth the new man. And, and bringing forth the new man. Why do we, why are we concerned about bringing forth the new man? Well, right here it is. It's summed up in the man, in John 15, 7. And I read this verse out of a lot of different versions, and I know we're all familiar with it, but John 15, 7, of course, talks about if you abide in me, and that's the presence of God, if you abide in mm -hmm. me, you're, you're always right there in my presence. You're going to learn what your identity is, what right. your true identity is, and my words abide in you. Okay, but when I read I read this verse out of a lot of different translations. And when I read John 15, 7 out of the Orthodox Jewish Bible, I got so much insight from it. So read this, please. If you remain in me. Okay, that's just like we know. And the Deuteronomy. Of me, the Deuteronomy of me. Deuteronomy of me remains in you. Okay. So the, the rabbis then, the Jewish rabbis, they they see this verse a little different than you and I do. We, we just think, oh, if his word, so I can have any word. I can, I, I study the word, I go to school, I, I finish programs, I, I go through disciple programs, and, and so his word's abiding in me. But, but this says, and the rabbi say, if my Deuteronomy abides in you, the Deuteronomy of me, Okay, so what is Deuteronomy? Uh, Deuteronomy, the meaning of it, it, it's a second law or it's a repeat of the law. And so, but what it really is, is the, if you look at the book of Deuteronomy, what it is. So Moses laid out the law. He, he had gone up on the mount mm -hmm. uh, with God and, and, and he got the Ten Commandments and then he, you know, wrote, of course, Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. And numbers and, and he had all of these laws but deuteronomy is the specific laws about the jews about israel i'm sorry about the israels operating and living in the promised land and it it, it talks about things that you're very familiar with but i want you to see it got very specific for israel how to live in the promised land. Of course, we can glean a lot out of that ourselves, but, but it wasn't just general laws. Oh, just do this and do that. No, it's, if you're going to live in the promised land, you're going to be successful and you're going to be effective in the promised land. Here's the specific things you need to know. You need to know Deuteronomy 28. Here's how you get the blessings. Mm -hmm. Obey the Lord. Mm -hmm. 20, 29, if you, I mean, 28, if you uh, don't obey the Lord, 
if you're not doing what he says to do, he, the curses are coming. These all these curses mm -hmm. are going to come. And then in verse, uh, then in chapter thirty, I'm just kind of summarizing Deuteronomy, what the book of Deuteronomy is about. Uh, that, that helps us understand what he's really saying in John fifteen seven, and and then in. Uh, the 30th chapter, he says, I, I said before you life and death. This is the way you live successfully in uh, the promised land. And that is you choose life. Hallelujah. 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 Choose blessings. Uh, and so he, there are really specific things about how the Israelites were to live in the promised land and be successful and be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. And then in uh, the 32nd uh, chapter, it, it sings a, a prophetic song. Uh, mm, was mm. Moses prophetic song and then chapter 33 talks about the prophetic uh, words that uh, Moses spoke over different groups of people and, and so if we look at that that's how we are successful our, our prayers are successful if we abide in him in his presence mm -hmm. and, and then we have the specific things mm -hmm. we have the specific utterances of the Holy Spirit, the revelations that have been given to you, the prophetic Hallelujah. words, the prophetic Psalms, the prophetic songs that you've sung and all of those Hallelujah. things. If those things are alive in you and alive in your heart and they're, they're the things that you meditate on and they're the things that you renew your mind, if this is all happening, your prayers are going to be answered. Hallelujah. I want to read that again out of John 15, 7. Out of, the, out of the voice. Out of the voice. If you abide in me and my voice. Now, when he says voice there, he's talking about the presence of Almighty God. When you abide in me and my presence, my voice abides in you. That's the Deuteronomy. These are all of the things that you, that God has revealed to you, and the revelations that he's revealed to you, the prophetic words that have been given to you, the prophetic psalm, uh, psalms and songs that you have sung and, and, and recited, all of these things, that's what needs to be alive inside of you because that identifies the true you, the authentic mm -hmm. you. You can't just put in a bunch of stuff there. You, it's got to be specific. It's specific to you because God has a specific image of you that, that relates to Jesus Christ. You're being conformed to that image. And, and, and we need to have those revelations and those prophetic words that have been spoken to over us. We need to be meditating on those things. And that's when our prayers are going to be answered. What we desire, because we are unique individuals. Each of us mm. is a unique individual. And we need to know what God has said about us. Mm. That's why it's important to be here in a, in a group like this, in a prophetic group like this, because the prophetic mm. words need to be flowing. And, and we Hallelujah. need to be speaking Hallelujah. over one another. Uh, prophetic words and then that becomes a part of that prophetic utterance and the revelation that God is giving you for your life so that as that is alive and you're keeping it alive and and, and moving using that to move towards the image of Jesus Christ that God has designed you to move towards that's when your prayers are going to be effective Amen. thank you Amen. for being here